Hey guys, Wolverine's here, and I'm back with another video. If you guys are wondering what's going on with all these videos, Wolverine, I thought you only record twice a week. It's okay, guys. Just say it's that I'm in the mood of the holidays, and the best way to share it with you guys is some top tens to lead up to something special on Christmas Day. Yes, I will actually record something now. I probably won't record something Christmas Day, but you guys will definitely get something Christmas Eve because I gotta stay up all night to watch the gifts anyhow. So, put your thanks now in the comments down below. And you know what? For those who said thank you, you're welcome. For those that didn't say thank you, guys got busy lives. I understand. I'm not hating. And those that just don't like my stuff, I understand as well. I don't expect everyone to love my stuff. I'd be very arrogant if I believed everyone on earth should love my stuff. I mean, I ain't no dictator of YouTube. I can't tell you what to like or what not to like. Anyways... All aside, I actually have here, as you guys can tell, dinosaurs. And believe it or not, yes, I do know what I'm talking about with dinosaurs. Because um, I don't know if you guys knew this. In fact, I don't think a lot of you knew this. But actually, when I was a casual duelist in my early days, I played a lot of dinosaurs. Until aliens came and play, and then zombies with beals, and then necro dragon and then they got dropped off out and they got the shaft which i'm thinking about bringing them back maybe a couple new builds I'm thinking jurax because i always did like them anyways off topic back to the topic top 10 dinos let's get this started for top 10 well for number 10 we have jurak petra not only is jurak petra a a pterodactyl which I love pterodactyls. Sorry if you hear that, guys. It's my brother. He's watching a movie right now. Don't mind him. He's cool. Two, he's on fire. So he's like a fire dinosaur. Which, what could be more badass? I mean, I'm thinking like an electric dinosaur, maybe. Which, ironically, is on the list. And three, his ability. Not only is he attacked, it returns the attacking monster to the hand. But also, the uh, owner of the card takes not only that but but this card gains defense equal to the returned monsters level times 100 so let's say i had 1500 and they decided they were going to play something weak to try to get the test off oh you hit it but was unable to destroy it it gets sent back to the hand and i gain some more defense depending on your levels Really interesting. I like that. But you know what? It even works if he's destroyed. So basically, he's a dinosaur-style penguin soldier. He is awesome in my book. And you know what? I can't wait to start Jurax back, guys. I can't wait. That's something you guys can look forward to 2016. Next, I got... Bam! Sabersaurus. How can you have dinos and not include a vanilla dino when dino rabbits raged the lands years ago? For those that don't know, Dino Rabbit was a deck designed on standard rank 3 or 4 monsters in their deck, basically splashable ones, and a bunch of level 3 or 4 dinos in their deck with Rescue Rabbit. Yes, you got Rescue Rabbit, which back then he was at 3. You were able to get him so easily because of all of the search engine back then. You would get your Rescue Rabbit, play your Rabbit, banish it, grab two dinos, and bam, instant exceed. Saber, Saber Source was very legendary for being one of the monsters they chose because he was one of the only level 4, I mean, normal dinos, I believe, released in the TCG. Well, we can check right here. And I have really good. Him and Cabazalus and then Crawling Dragon and Twin. So there was a good bit, but I did see Saber Source being used a lot. Basically because he is not only great for Exceed Summons, but he's also a nice beat stick. And with him being Earth, he was nice and searchable. So for number 8 is Gillosaurus. For those that don't know what Gillosaurus is, you can special summon this card from your hand. And when you do, your opponent can target one monster in their graveyard and special summon that target. But here's the thing. If you went first... Or even on the first turn, if there was no monsters in the graveyard, you got yourself a free summon. And then you would have a normal summon. It was crazy and awesome. 
It was awesomely crazy. And it was really good for a lot of decks if you ran two Gillosaurus on the first turn. Because then you could sacrifice both, go Ultimate Tyrano, and wreck some shit. Sorry, guys. I get pumped. I did like dinosaurs. I'm thinking about going back to them. And just doing this video makes me want to go back to them. So for number 7 is Ultimate Tyranno. 3000 beat stick. Yeah guys. And he's got an effect. If this card's faced up attack during your battle phase. It must attack first. And it attacks all of your opponent's monsters. But it doesn't say what order. So let's say your opponent has a whole bunch of weak monsters. And one big strong monster. You can attack the strong monster last. There is nothing saying you couldn't do that. So if you play it accordingly. If you're ultimate Tyranno. You could have wiped the field. Except for one monster. And back in the day when he was used. Because there wasn't XYZs when he was used. You could have comboed this with Burden of the Mighty. And just be able to wipe everything. This guy is a legitimate monster. You see this. Hope you play Xseeds. Hope you got something with high attack and that your opponent isn't playing Burning of the Mighty. That's all you need to know. Because this dinosaur will eat you for dinner. Number six. Superconductor Tyranno. How can you describe dinos, the top ten favorites, when you do not include SCT? Or Superconductor Tyranno for short. SCT is the only monster in the game to break the 3000 rule. Which, if you don't know what that is, it means monsters with over monsters with over 2000 or 3000 attack has to have a backlash effect. But reading SCT's effect, once per turn you contribute one monster and inflict 1000 damage to your opponent and just can't attack. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. That's direct damage. Combo that with like, I don't know, Dark Room and Nightmare. That's 1300. Combo it with two Dark Room and Nightmare. That's 1600. Combo it with three Dark Room and Nightmare. That's 1900. You see what I'm getting at, guys? He is very good in Dino Burn. Trust me. And even just then, he's a massive beat stick. And if that doesn't catch your eyes, he's a half robotic dinosaur that shoots lightning. How is that not cool? Now, I'm going to let that sit in for a second. Half dinosaur, half robot shoots lightning. Now that we got that covered, and now that you're thinking about it, I'm going to let it sink in. Pretty awesome, huh? Now, number five is Pyronix the Elemental Lord. A lot of you could be thinking, why the fuck Pyronix? Who the hell uses Pyronix? Guys, oh, well, Pyrorex, uh, whatever you want to pronounce. I'm going to pronounce it Pyrorex. Pyrorex cannot be special summon unless you have exactly five monsters, five fire monsters in your graveyard. In other words, he's a dark armed dragon for fire monsters. And it cannot be special any other way. Normally that'd be bad, but that's okay. And when this card special summon, you can target one monster your opponent controls, destroys it, and then both players take damage equal to the half of the original attack monster. You can only use this effect once per turn, I believe. Yeah, only use the effect once per turn. And then if he leaves the field, skip the battle phase. That's the only bad part about him. Think about this, guys. Not only is the fact that he is literally a walking ring of destruction or a walking nerfed ring of destruction, he can still attack the turn you use him. And if you're playing something that gives you draw power, like let's say Chicken Game, which everyone knows I love because it just makes great draw power, you don't have to worry about it because it's like, oh, 
Okay, don't take damage as long as you have the lower life points. It's awesome. That is really cool, guys. Play him, try him out, find a way to use him. He's awesome. Number four, believe it or not, is. Hold on a minute, guys. I apologize if this video gets a little glitchy or something. I'll we'll rewatch it to check. But number four is actually a monster that nobody thinks about. And he is so scary. Tyranno Infinity. The original attack of this monster becomes a thousand for every banished dino you have. So by playing Dino Macro or Dino Fisher, this monster could easily go up to 15,000. And here's the thing. It's a four-star monster. All you gotta do is drop him. Oops. There's Macro. Wait four or five turns. Find a way to banish all the dinos in your graveyard. Oops. Oh, Tyranno Infinity. Wipe the field. It's a monster. Guys, if you've never seen the power of Tyro Infinity or Tyranno Infinity, either A, no one understands the joy of what is Tyranno Infinity, or B, you've never faced Macro Dinos and give that as a blessing. Which I'm thinking about bringing back, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, number three is actually another kaiju. Guys, I like the kaijus. You're going to notice this. Yep. Doragon, the mad flame kaiju. Number one, he's a dinosaur but looks like a dragon. That's badass alone. For two, kaijus is awesome. And for three, you can remove three kaiju counters anywhere to destroy all of your opponent's monsters. What? Not to mention the effect that it doesn't target. And look at his attack. 3,000. This guy would eat you for dinner. Guys, for dinner. And that is awesome. And that's okay. Because that's awesome. Anyways. <clears throat> yeah. Dogaron. Is very awesome. The kaijus are awesome. Just to let you guys know. If you know anyone that's playing kaijus, you'll see it when they combine it with Gradles. Anyways, besides that, number two. Ironically, this actually does go in order from deck to extra deck this time. That's actually pretty cool. Number two belongs to Grenosaurus. Two level 3 monsters, and once per turn, or no, not once per turn, any time, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can detach one XC and inflict a thousand to your damage. Damage them. So let's think about this. This is great for burn decks. Why? Well, for one, two level 3s are easy to get on the field because I think Marshmallow's a level 3. So put two Marshmallow's together, make a Grenosaurus. Okay. Flip. Skull Invitation. Okay. Attack an opponent's monster. Skull Invitation activates. They lose 300. Now if you have three Dark Room of Nightmares on the field. 3, 6, 9, 12. They will lose 1200 life points. Not to mention another 1000 because you activate its effect going from 1000, 13, 16, 19. Yeah, you've already took out a chunk of 39-something, even plus, out of them. Burn dinos is crazy, guys. I'm thinking about bringing them. You guys are going to be sorry. You guys are going to cry. You guys are going to beg. And when you see Grenosaurs, you know it's going to be over. Anyways, enough ranting. I'm sorry, guys. When I see stuff like dinos or dragons, it gets me pumped. I'm sorry. I'm a big dinosaur fan. Ugh, dinosaurs. Anyways... As I say that, holding my Yoshi plushie. <laughs> I don't got a Yoshi plushie, guys. I wish I did. But I do actually got a giant stuffed T-Rex. It's actually pretty awesome. He's sitting on my stand right now. Just listening. He's like, yeah. He's going to bring those dinos to town. 
Anyways, <laughs> number one, and I know I've been stalling this, but I can't help but I love, love dinos. Number one belongs to number 61, Volcasaurus. Yeah. This card is awesome. That's all I could say. Two level fives. Detach one material and then choose one monster your opponent controls and destroys it. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original monster's attack. The only thing is, this card just can't attack directly when you use this effect. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, you got blue eyes? That's okay. Volcasaurus, detach, bam, take 3,000. I didn't even have to touch you. Yeah, Volcasaurus is badass. That's why a lot of level 5 players... At spam level fives, play this card. Don't underestimate the Volcasaurus. Anyways, guys, that's my top 10 dinos. I'm sorry if I seemed a little more pumped, but when I talk about dinos and dragons in Yu-Gi-Oh, it gets me pumped. And guess what's coming up next? Dragons. So, yeah, I can't wait. But I think that's it for now, guys. This is the Wyvern signing out. Later, guys.